Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on an introduction to the point by serial correlation. As always, if you find this video to be helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. The point by serial correlation is a parametric test. It's a special case of the Pearson product moment correlation. And both the Pearson product moment correlation and the point by serial correlation measure to what degree two variables move together in a linear fashion. And they both test the same null hypothesis, that the population correlation is equal to zero. The Pearson product moment correlation requires two variables measure the continuous level. The point by serial correlation requires one variable measure the continuous level and one variable measure the nominal level with two groups. So more specifically, a dichotomous variable. So a variable with only two levels. The two levels cannot be ranked and they're mutually exclusive. So let's consider an example of a situation where we could use a point by serial correlation and a Pearson product moment correlation. Let's say that you're at a mental health agency and you have participants that regularly come in for various types of counseling treatment. And you start a time limited program to treat anxiety. Let's say it's eight weeks long. And you have a measure that you used to assess the participants at the end of the eight weeks. And it's a psychometric instrument designed to measure anxiety levels. And the output is at the continuous level of measurement. And you have reason to believe that the amount of time that a participant stays in treatment moves with that outcome, that anxiety level. So perhaps that you believe that the more time that a participant is in treatment, the lower the anxiety score would be. And let's also assume that if a participant drops out, if they don't complete all eight weeks, that you're still able to assess that participant because they come to the agency for other services. So ideally, in this situation, you'd want to use a Pearson product moment correlation because you have two continuous variables, the amount of time up to eight weeks and the psychometric instrument score from that instrument that measures anxiety levels. However, let's assume that this is a relationship that you're interested in, the relationship between time and that anxiety level, but you arrive at the agency after data has already been collected, after the treatment is already over, and the only information you have available is that anxiety level score and one more variable, which is the participant completed all eight weeks or they didn't. So completed or not completed. You don't have the precise amount of time, for example, four weeks or five weeks. You only have the fact they completed or that they didn't. That's a dichotomous variable and a participant can only belong to one of those categories. Either they completed the treatment or they did not. So these data would be compatible with a point by serial correlation. So conducting a point by serial correlation produces two kinds of output. You get the correlation coefficient, and that's a measure of the strength of the relationship between those two variables. And you also get a probability value. The probability value is the value that we compare to the alpha, which is determined before the statistic is completed. And the alpha for the social sciences is usually 0.05 or 5%. And the probability value tells us the probability that we could make the observation that we did based on random error alone if the null hypothesis is true. And if that probability is less than 5%, we would reject the null hypothesis. Now an independent samples t-test requires the 
same configuration of variables. You have one dichotomous variable and one continuous variable, and it also produces a probability value. The probability value for a point by serial correlation and the p-value for an independent samples t-test is identical. You could also perform a simple linear regression with these variables. The dichotomous variable would be the predictor variable and the continuous variable would be the outcome variable. So with just that same variable, the one dichotomous variable's predictor and of course the same continuous variable, the linear regression will also provide the same p-value as the point by serial correlation and the independent samples t-test. It will also produce the correlation coefficient. In a linear regression, the correlation coefficient is equal to the slope. So in the equation for a regression line, y equals mx plus b, the m value, the slope, is equal to the r value, the correlation coefficient. So a correlation coefficient is the slope of a line that is fitted using the least squares method. So now let's take a look at the elements of a point by serial correlation. So as I mentioned before, you need one dichotomous variable. So a dichotomous variable has two levels. They're mutually exclusive. And of course, that's the nominal level of measurement. So these levels cannot be ranked. They're in name only. So in the example I've been using, that would be the completed or not completed. Those would be the two levels. So the variable would be completion status, and one level would be completed, and the other level would be not completed. For a point by serial correlation, you also have the one continuous variable. This is recorded at the interval or ratio level of measurement. Taken together, interval or ratio, we just refer to that as continuous, but there is a difference between the interval and ratio levels of measurement. Both have a meaningful distance between the observations, but only the ratio level has a true zero. So consider measures of temperature, like the Fahrenheit scale and the Kelvin scale. Fahrenheit has a meaningful distance between the observations, but it does not have a true zero. The zero on the Fahrenheit scale doesn't represent an absence of the construct that it measures, which is heat. Kelvin is ratio. It has a meaningful distance between the observations and zero on that scale does represent an absence of heat. Now moving on to the assumptions for a point by serial correlation. So other than what I mentioned before in terms of the structure, the variables, you have two other assumptions for a point by serial correlation. The assumption of normality, and that means that the dependent variable must be normally distributed for both levels of the independent variable. So in the example I've been using, you have the dichotomous variable with the completed and not completed, and you have scores associated with those levels, the anxiety level scores. So all of the scores associated with the completed level of the independent variable completion status, all those values would have to be normally distributed. And all of the dependent variable scores for the not completed level would have to be normally distributed. So there'd be two evaluations that would be made there. The normality for both levels of the independent variable. So to test normality, there are several different methods. The Shapiro-Wilk test is one method. With the Shapiro-Wilk test, you get a p-value. If that p-value is less than 0.05, that indicates you violated the assumption of normality. If it's greater than 0.05, that indicates that you have met the assumption for normality. We also use the skewness and kurtosis to check normality, as well as the QQ plot and the histogram. It's not unusual for the results of all those tests to be considered together when trying to determine if you have a normal distribution. The second assumption is homogeneity of variances. And this means the dependent variable variances 
for both levels of the independent variable should be equal. So the way the data is divided is similar to the test for normality, except we look at variances. So you have all the scores associated with the completed level of the independent variable completion status, and all the scores associated with the not completed level. The variances between those two groups of scores should be equal. And this is usually tested with the Levine's test. The Levine's test produces a probability value. And if that probability value is less than 0 0.05, that indicates that we have violated the assumption of homogeneity of variances. If it's greater than 0 0.05, that indicates we've met the assumption of homogeneity of variances. I hope you found this introduction to the point by serial correlation to be helpful. Thanks for watching.